Hello! Welcome back to this Fantasy Star 4 series, and we have our special guest star again. So, uh, something you forgot to mention earlier. Well, sure, let's jump right into that. Um, the Paralamate was a healing item from Fantasy Star 1. However, it was localized as burgers for the English version. Oh, it was so obvious. How could I not have known that? The Paralamate is actually a uh, play on a popular Japanese dietary supplement called Calorie Mate. Anyone who has played Metal Gear Solid 3 has encountered one of those. Huh, that makes me wonder if the other medicines are a play on that as well. They are not. They are not. Okay. Also, the Chaos Sorcerer is an enemy type from Fantasy Star 2. Yeah, well, I should have known. But speaking of uh, enemy types, I was a little bit wrong about the particulars of the Big Sandworm. It's not that you unlock them by doing a particular hunter mission, you just go find this particular infant worm monster in this part of Motavia, and you can uh, unlock the special fight from there. If that's a thing you want to do. I probably could have done this the moment I got Raja and would benefit more from it. But hey, we're here now. <clears throat> One of the nice things about this particular mechanic for how the enemy shows up is that it gives you plenty of time to set up your buffs beforehand. And they will be necessary because this this monster, if I wasn't buffed up, it could one-shot more than one of the characters in my party. Okay, as he said earlier, this version is stronger than the one you fight uh, as part of the uh, Hunter's Guild quests. And not by a small margin. Unfortunately, aside from the experience you get, there aren't any special benefits from uh, dealing with this optional enemy. Also, the game goes out of its way to tell you that it will let you run away if you try so it doesn't spring an instant party wipe on you if you're not ready. Hold on, you're only using one claw? Yes, uh, I found that equipping a shield on Rika is very helpful at points. If you had watched my previous video, you would have known that, for example, in the last dungeon, it, the plasma field's laser resistance was very helpful. Yeah. Especially since a large part of her role... Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. There's that. Yes, there is Earthquake. And I believe that is a physical uh, attack. It's, it is. It's just so strong that even with Raja's uh, blessing, it, it did that. Yes. I didn't know it could do that until this playthrough. And oh, I know about it. Oh. Oh, you've done this before, have you? Yeah. Okay, well... I think you underestimate how many times I've played Fantasy Star 4. So, basically, see, these sandworms give you almost as much experience as bosses do at this point in the game. Mm. Although, experience does ramp up a fair bit once you start exploring DeSolis. Yes, it does. Well, that is when you're exploring it on foot, anyway. Although, some of the encounters on, on the vehicle also give a fair amount. We'll, we'll explore more of the on-foot stuff later on. There's several, well, at least two filler dungeons and one filler side segment, but we're not going to deal with those just yet. I'd like to advance the story first. Well, if you insist. I do, because there are some significant things that happen. Also, I like the touch that when you're blasting off from uh, uh, the satellite, the Landale doesn't go through that fuel-consuming blasting off animation because they're in space. There's no need for that. There is no gravity to deal with. Or at least none that matters. Mm. I also like the touch of its forward thrusters slowing you down as you land. And yeah, space travel has always been the thing of Fantasy Star. And we have a new ride. The Ice Dagger. 
Yes, both the Ice Digger and the Land Rover were orig originally in Fantasy Star 1, though there wasn't any special vehicle combat in that game. Sorry to disappoint you guys, but the Ice Digger does not attack with its drills in encounters. Eh. Although, honestly, considering some of the other things that uses, it makes perfect sense. Why, w why would you use drills when you have some of the other options? Well, dishonestly, I would say it's a horrible misoppor missed opportunity to give your vehicle a melee attack. I can't say I have any particular aversion to vehicle melee attacks, especially coming from someone who plays Super Robot Wars games. Mm-hmm. Now this town is completely unnecessary to visit. Absolutely. However, there's some cool stuff here. There is. In particular, there are a couple of unusual things in the town armory. Uh, that's... I don't know, that's cutting it pretty fine if you ask me. We would never eat them, but we do eat their eggs. Yeah, well, the thing about birds is that not all of the eggs they lay are fertilized. Chickens will still lay eggs even oh, I, I outside know about... of the company of a rooster. Yeah, I know about that part. Also, look at that. There is nothing strange here. <laughs> totally worth the 500 meseta. Yeah, at this point, that's not a huge expense. Hmm. It, it doesn't actually change the way anything interacts with you, I'm sad to say. Yeah, the penguin does not assist you in combat encounters. This is not Earthbound. It is not a teddy bear. It is not a flying man. No. Okay, this shop s sells elemental weapons. Yep. In particular, I want the Thunderclaw. I'm only going to buy one, but later I'm going to stop by again and pick up a second one. Why? Well, one to be equipped on Rika, and one for someone else to use as an item. Okay. Because Thunder Element attacks are not easy to come by. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there are three characters who can use them. And they don't get very many uses of it. So, where to next? Well, we're going to the east. We have some places to stop by. And actually this overworld map travel is not especially easy. Not because the decisions are complicated. Oh! This looks like a great town to visit. Oh, hi, zombies. Yep. Someone mentioned that this town was destroyed, and sure enough... Here we are. Here we are. So, why didn't you get the flame sword? It, it was too expensive. Okay, so zombies are not tough and they don't give you anything. They, they do not give you anything worth mentioning, and the entirety of the town is like that. It is full of zombo. As for why it's like that, we'll see an explanation of that pretty soon. It's the T-Virus! They have the plague. It sure is scary. Now that's the place in the game where you trigger the next part of the story, but I'd like to explore a little bit more than that. Being near that tower is bad news. Which makes it, I think... Oh, they also sell elemental weapons here. Yeah. 
Which which makes this, I think, a fair bit worse than Zio's fort back on Motavia. You haven't been selling your stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna do some of that off screen. All oh, right, it's the frayed mantle leg. Hmm. That uh, was from Fantasy Star One. My mistake. We all make mistakes. But we're going to be talking a bit more about that. And once again, way too expensive. You need cash! Why aren't you golding? I told you, the filler stuff is next episode. Oh, Aspers! Aspers. Should I start on that now or wait a moment? Let's wait until we see one. Also, I can understand why why this lady wants to do whatever she can, but staying indoors is not going to protect you from this problem. It is a plague. But not it's not spread the way a normal plague is. Also, it was fairly frustrated, fr frustrating for me to see that item sign there, but have no entrance to w that building. Mm-hmm. No, there's no hidden door in back, even though that is a very video game thing to happen. Now, when the guy said that the innkeeper had opened this place out of the goodness of its heart, I knew that enough about the series that there's going to be a different story somewhere. Yep. Okay. So... The espers are people who have the talent to use real magic. In Fantasy Star... By the time of Fantasy Star 2, they had all been centralized in a place called the Esper Mansion on Desolus, which is an incredibly crucial location in Fantasy Star 2. It's basically where you kick off the endgame. And yep, the innkeeper was just afraid that people would retaliate on him if he didn't open the place up. Which is not an unreasonable thing to worry about, considering the state of the town. Look, things are tense. People are a little desperate. There's a zombie problem. And this is a fairly extreme uh, method here. I just imagine him yelling, WHAM! Yeah, probably doing that. But yeah, they are literally killing themselves a little bit at the time to slow this plague down. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. Um. Not our best character! Also, that just shows how serious this problem is, because Raja does not get knocked out easily by anything. Yep. Yeah, by the way, Raja objects to being called an old man, and he's kind of right. You've seen his status screen and how it says he's, uh, like, 80-something? Well, Dezolians live to, like, 170 to 200 years. Yep. And what we're seeing here is a little bit more world-building as well, because the Black Energy Wave is what killed Alice just from a very brief exposure. What we're seeing here is slightly less intense, but more long-term exposure, and... We are in the radiation zone. We are in the evil radiation zone. So, looks like one of the espers decided to go fight City Hall. To be fair, this is an unusual instance of a disease that can be solved by violence. But w there are some particulars that we need to deal with first. first now, when I say that the battles here aren't difficult, it's because I can do that. Yes. However, those things are limited, and there are several encounters that you uh, 
can't deal with without those end spheres. Otherwise, you probably risk death. So you gotta be careful about how much you travel in one go. Now this, if you don't know how this encounter works, can provide a lot of problems. Yep. So we're going to do it the wrong way first. We're gonna fight a round of combat. Haha! Ho ho! There is no limit to the number of times they can do that. But it's a battle you can run from, which is unusual for a story battle. So we have recovered Sailor Mercury. And we've learned just about everything there is to learn about Kyra. Yeah. She's a little one-note story-wise. However, gameplay-wise, she's very interesting, and I'll go into more depth about that uh, next vi next video. Okay, Lutz. Lutz was the wizard member of the party in the original Fantasy Star. Yep. I talked earlier about how he invented techniques, he, and he, my brother just explained... Oh, no, wait, no, that hasn't come up yet. Uh, he's shown up in Fantasy Star 2 as well. He's more like your um, sage support in that game. Okay. That's not how magic works in Fantasy Star. That's how he was being kept alive in Fantasy Star 2. Yep, Ren's guess has a lot of merit to it, and his uh, defreezing was a fairly elaborate animation, especially by the standards of its time. Yeah, basically the way he was kept alive is that he was kept in a deep freeze most of the times, except be for being woken up briefly for very crucial moments. Like what's happening in Fantasy Star 2, it's tough to be more crucial than that. Yes. Yeah, meeting Lutz specifically is what kicks off the endgame of Fantasy Star 2. Because he knows what you have to do to maybe not solve things, but prevent them from being even worse. Yes. It's that kind of game. He's the one who actually knows where Mother Brain is and can get you there. Which is interesting because it takes a little bit of thinking to realize that even though everyone is governed by Mother Brain, no one actually knows where it is. Or even especially where it came from. Now this is not the right direction, but since we're going this way anyway, might as well put them on my teleportation list. Yep. Unlock the fast travel. Now we're going where we actually need to. It's, it's really satisfying to push through those ice walls too. Did I mention that I like the vehicle sections of this game? They are very strong. One of the things they added to the PlayStation 2 remake of Fantasy Star 1 is that uh, during the ending, after Dark Force has been defeated, Lutz uh, says that he was going to figure out uh, where that thing uh, came from and uh, continue, basically continue the uh, fight as long as it takes. And he meant it. As to what lengths, we've already discussed some of them, but that's not the whole story. She's not going to be more careful. No. 
Okay, items! We're gonna skip those for now because I feel like we don't quite have the authority to go around looting the place yet. Hey, books! Something else that's worth mentioning in Fantasy Star 2 is that you never get someone who can use old magic in that game. Right. Which I think makes it, of 1, 2, and 4, the only game where that's the case. I, I kind of mentally cut out Fantasy Star 3 from my tally whenever I compare them. Yeah, f Fantasy Star 1, 2, and 4 is the basic trilogy. We're gonna answer that question in short order. And also, the black energy wave is perfectly reasonable to be afraid of something like that. Yes. There are rational reasons to be afraid of the black energy wave. And Kyra is right. Um, keeping those people alive, especially through extreme self-sacrificing methods like that, uh, that's, that's not gonna work for very long. It's not what I would call a solution. By the way, the thing about techniques is that Lutz first started working on inventing them after both he and Alice disappeared from the Algo system for a few years. Oh, I didn't know that Alice had a hand in inventing them. Mm-hmm. Hey! Rune is known around here. The man has authority, although, honestly, is that a surprise? <laughs> he is a wizard. How did Rune get to Motavia, anyway? Well... I might be able to explain that. Okay. But not immediately. Yeah, we got some more stuff to discuss very soon. I guess even the freezer has its limits. Yep. Yeah, this is not just the general, oh, I'm sure his spirit lives on comforting thing. This has some actual backing to it. Yep. Yep. So... The thing about this is that Lutz does not really completely overwrite the original personality. Although there are some traits that go go through anyway. Let, let's talk about Zio. Okay, so basically Zio is a washout from the Esper Mansion. And he competed with Rune to uh, try to take on the legacy of Lutz. He did not win. Even without the knowledge of Lutz, Rune is just that much better. <laughs> we de so, we defeated Dark Force, but... <laughs> and this answers the question of why Rune is so darn strong, especially in magic, when he was living on a planet where no one knew much of anything about magic. Yep.
we didn't really get a whole lot of Lutz's personality in Fantasy Star 1. Well, he was a kind of a jerk. A, a little bit, yeah. I definitely wouldn't want to fight him. And there's Kyra. Never meet your heroes. Nope. I believe the Eclipse Torch is also from Fantasy Star 1. It is. One of its functions was to basically be an infinite use light item for uh, dungeons. Yep, when you got 3D mazes, sometimes you got to carry a torch with you. <laughs> he was. In Fantasy Star 1, you had to give him a letter from the governor or else he wouldn't even talk to you. Yep. By the way, a small detail... Rune's first two attack spells in this game, his real magic spells, are Fire and Wind, which were his, two of his attack spells in Fantasy Star 1. In, in fact, Wind was his strongest uh, offensive spell in that game, and it worked very differently from the way it does now. Okay, so Kyra. Yeah, as I said, I'll go over the details next time. There's actually a lot to talk about, which is why simply looking at the status screen doesn't quite do it justice. Mm -hmm. But now we got a place to go, and we've learned quite a bit about our own party members. So I just want to make it explicit. Uh, Rune, being an incarnation of Lutz from Fantasy Star 1, is our representative of that game. Yes. And, well... I guess that's about it for now. Don't worry, I'll go back and pick up those items at the start of next video. Alright. See you later. Bye.